I was recently mocked by a business reporter for suggesting that economies of scale were in some way responsible for pandemics of salmonellosis and avian flu. To me, his mocking suggested a profound ignorance of both biology and of global trade. Eating is to the human-environment relationship what sex is between people. You can't get closer to the environment than by taking pieces of bark and roots and fruits and nuts and bits of animals and putting them into your body and they become one with you. They become part of your body. The environments from which foods are produced and through which they pass on their way from the growing area to your table are rich with bacteria, viruses, parasites, and in many cases, toxic chemicals of various sorts. In 1994, an estimated 224,000 people got sick from Salmonella typhimurium. Tanker trucks in Minnesota that had been carrying liquid raw eggs were then used to haul ice cream. In 2000, more than 13,000 people in Japan got sick from eating powdered skim milk contaminated with Staphylococcus toxin. We're seeing old foodborne diseases showing up in strange new places. Botulism in carrot juice, E. coli in spinach, salmonella in almonds. It's a combination of problems. Economies of scale, intensification, international trade are probably three of the biggest ones. Large farms for plants and animals, large processing plants, all of which create ideal conditions for outbreaks and epidemics, have been promoted in order to keep the prices down. They do keep the prices down, but they also promote epidemics and pandemics. Intensification. The crowding of plants and animals creates richer environments for bacteria to be shed from the animal, they're more likely to shed them, and to grow in the soils between the plants. So we're creating better conditions for these organisms to shed and to grow. And finally, international trade, which spreads bacteria, viruses, and parasites, toxins all over the world. The possibility of getting sick from something that, that is so important for us culturally and romantically and socially, that this should make us sick to me is, is, is both interesting and, and I think it's outrageous. It shouldn't happen. There should be ways of, of dealing with this so that we can enjoy ourselves while we're eating without worrying about it. In order to do that, I think people need to have a better understanding of those links between ecology and food and foodborne diseases and agriculture. And one way to do that is certainly to get a book like this out there, have people read it, ask questions, get to know your food, take pleasure in his or her company, get their family story, wash your hands, make sure the fridge works, and that supper is good and hot, turn down the lights, enjoy.